break. Spread the ear pollution, both far and wide. Keep your contributions by your side. Strong fist of man. Could be a winner, boy, and move quite a well. Strong fist of man. Oh! Strong fist of man. You got your number down. Keep it all in place Work your way Right in the my face First you try to bend me You make my backbone slide But when you find you bled me Skip on by, keep on Don't mess up me Give me the business all night long Don't mess up me Hey, what's up YouTube, man? Coach B here, back for some more Double Wing content. So bear with me, my voice has been acting crazy. So I'm gonna try to get through this, through this video as best as I can. <clears throat> so first of all, if you like my videos, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. I appreciate all the followers of my channel and uh, all the support I've been hearing, like just, you know, through emails and stuff like that. So I wanna quickly get to what I'm talking about today. It's gonna be all about pulling and kind of how I coach it and how I develop um, my pulling scheme that is specific to my offense, which is the UC double wing uh, and the gun wing, which was largely featured in the video that you just saw. Um, so <clears throat> why do a pulling video? Well, number one, the double wing offense and the gun wing offense specifically is an offense that's unlike any other in which we pull on almost every play. So. Shout out to my co uh, my boy uh, Johnson, my boy Coach Johnson at, with the Gainville Grizzlies, man. Uh, so he just came to me and he said, I think you should do a, a, a video on pulling um, because I think it's largely misunderstood. There's a lot of coaches that like will get my, my offense and they'll buy into my system and then they won't pull. And if you don't pull, that's it, you largely defeat the purpose. Like you should be pulling at least one kid on the backside or you're not really a double wing team because that's just what double wings team, teams do. So since pulling is such a large part of this offense, I figured that'd be a great topic for a video. So let's go over it. Um, number one, how is the double wing different? Well, again, like I just said, we pull on almost every single play. Um, other than wedging, um, which is a, like a specialty blocking play, pretty much the double wing offense, when we are running the ball, we are pulling on every single play. Um, so, to some defenses, some defenses think, well, we'll just up the pressure, we'll just chase your pullers. And that can work, but there's also a lot of misdirection that's happening. Like, generally what happens with a double wing team is that with the pullers, they can try keying your guards and doing that kind of stuff, but again, you are just outmaneuvering them. They have to make decisions not knowing what the play is. The offense has the advantage of knowing what the play is. So you just have to out-execute other teams. Um, so when I first got my coaching opportunity, actually when I was first became an assistant, uh, the coach that I was coaching with, he was the head coach and the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator and everything. Um, and he ran an offense that was a shotgun, unbalanced, single wing, unbalanced line, shotgun, single wing. I've, I've talked about it. You may have seen video of it on my, on my channel. Um, but we did 
practically zero pulling. I think we may pull a guard on like a, a, this crazy reverse he had. But that was the only play that we ever, pull, ever pulled. And I never understood it. I mean, unbalanced line, you kind of already have an additional tackle over there. But who cares? Like, still pull somebody. You don't need to block all these kids. And that's a fundamental philosophy of the double wing. Um, so that's why I kind of chose the double wing um, over doing what this coach I was coaching with did. Because, I mean, it was effective. It's a wildcat type of offense. It uses a lot of direct snap, like you saw in the, in the intro video, my eagle heavy formation. Uh, that is part of my manual and part of my system that I, I, I love using it. It's just a direct snap package to any kid on your team. And I call it eagle or eagle heavy. Eagle heavy is generally when I'd say I'll take two backs out of the backfield and I'll put more linemen in there. So it's like I'll have 10 linemen on the field and one shotgun back, which is usually my fullback. <clears throat> and it's just a nasty direct power run formation. <clears throat> I see my voice going again. Mm. So, the number one thing is that blocking schemes are the hardest things for youth, youth coaches to develop, okay? So, in my specific system, um, my pulling scheme is, de is determined by the called play. Uh, Ray 34 power. Power is the blocking scheme. Ray 25 counter. Counter is the blocking scheme. Gun 27 Trojan sweep. Sweep is the blocking scheme. And they know the, by the digit which way we're going and who's getting the ball. It's a simple system. It's very easy to install. Um, <clears throat> it's simple. Okay, it's foolproof. Now, I have a couple of different concepts for pulling um, on the backside. And I'll, when I go to the whiteboard, we'll go over those. I have three of them. It's GT, which is the traditional guard and tackle pull on the backside with a tight end cut. Uh, there's go pulling, which is guard only. And then there's gate pulling, which is what I have gone to now. And when we go to the whiteboard, I'll discuss all that. Uh, we'll also discuss that poles are not all the same, okay? A power pole does not look like a counter pole, and a counter pole does not look like a Trojan pole. So we're gonna go over the, the different the different ways that like the different ways the things like how they look on the whiteboard when we start pulling. Because those three poles are entirely different. Um, I'll touch a little bit on skip pulling, and if you have a kid that knows how to skip pull, I'll tell you when that's like convenient, and if he can really pull it off, why it will give you an advantage. Um, <clears throat> so let's just get right into the whiteboard stuff, man. I, I don't want to talk forever, and I want I want to make uh, the video be more knowledgeable and cut down on time. So let's just get to it. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so basically, what you see on the board right here is um, basically my kids are in UC double wing um, and the call is Ray 34 power. So power dictates the blocking scheme that we're gonna use on the play side. The 34 identifies who the at man is, which right here would be the four man. So you see I have a like kind of like a six two front right here. So basically what's happening is the good God system on the play side of here, I got play side as a good God. What it's giving you is giving you a double team right here on this kid and a kick out here on this kid. So your running lane is going to be right in here, okay? But again, this isn't about running lanes and this isn't about good God. This is about what we do on the backside. So as you can see, my center has man on, man away. And the first concept that I used um, was your standard like GT pull. I wouldn't say GT. I wouldn't say Ray 34 power GT um, simply because that this was our base um, pulling concept on the back side, which was basically just these two guys right here pulling. I'm just going to move my, my quarterback out of the way. These two guys right here pulling as a team, okay? These two guys right here pulling as a team upfield. And then once they get upfield to second level, they basically, one runs, uh, one runs inside out and the other one runs outside in, okay? I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry outside inside out and the other one runs out <laughs> inside out this way okay so they basically split off but i was using a backside gt pulling as my base and what happens is when you do that your tight end has to essentially crab block into this area right here now why did i get away from doing that i got away from doing that because what would happen here is a lot of times this pile of bodies right here I would get calls by the center blocking down, okay? And then they see this kid crab block, and then your center drives this kid into your crab block, and you get a 15-yard penalty 
um, for blocking below the waist on an engaged person, which is a penalty, okay? So a lot of times the ref can't, just simply can't see it. So um, for some teams that, you know, employ the double wing and they just can't get, um, you know, usually they'll start off by having like a go, uh, a go scheme, which is one of the other uh, double wing blocking schemes on the backside, which is a go scheme would basically be this guy would like just base block here, okay? This would be like a base block here. And then you have one puller, okay? That's more of a go scheme, okay? So again, there's GT, there's go schemes, which is guard only. So if I wanted to do that, let's say this guy's a beast back here, this end is just crashing or he's doing something weird. So I would just call Ray 34 power go. And if we were running a GT scheme initially as our base, then the tackle would know he's off. It's a guard only pull, okay? So that's one of the schemes that you can also do. Now, the third scheme, and this is what I, I do as my base now, is a gate, is a gate pull. I'll keep everything else the same, except for this right here. So here's your tackle, okay? Tight end. So on the backside now for all my power plays, I gate pull. I am a 24-7 gate puller, okay? And the reason I started doing that is because I noticed that my tackles in unweight rest in, in the with leagues with no weight restrictions, my tackles would be big, huge kids, and they couldn't really move that well. They could move enough to close down a gap, which is what I require them to do. Fast inside reaching which is just basically stepping down and then wheeling their hips around and just covering for the pulling guard, okay? Setting up like a little mini wall right here. And this guy, my gate puller, my backside tight end puller is going to come and he is going to block inside out, okay? Unlike my guard who is blocking outside in, going to like this, you know, middle backer. <clears throat> so that's gate pulling. Now again, gate pulling is a little bit more high speed. It's faster. Um, now I wanna go over a little bit with how pulls are not the same, okay? So I'm gonna clear the whiteboard. I'm gonna stop the video, just clear the whiteboard. And I'm just gonna show you how pulls are not really the same. And all of my pulls have a, just, you, just basically a different setup and a different system which, which, they, which, which they follow. All right, so I got the board clear. Now I wanna just go over how pulls are not all the same. As you can see, I have the board document with power, counter, and sweep. And how, how are these pulls differently? You also notice that I've now gone into my gun wing formation, which is what you saw in the intro video. And I'm going to discuss how it Im, 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 impacts um, how fast your pullers can basically clear because they don't have to worry about the quarterback no longer being in the UC position. The snap comes out, which allows your guards to pull really fast. So let's just go over the three types of pulls and how I teach it, okay? So first of all, power pulls. Power pulls are gonna focus on eating space up, up field, okay? So let's say you have a nose tackle and you have this, this double team block that's gonna happen right here, okay? So he has a double team block. So now these two components of your offense have now moved up here just simply by firing. Okay, so what I like my kids to do is I tell my kids to basically, my guards especially, I, they're already recessed back. So when the play side fires off the ball, I tell my, my guard to basically pull and then basically eat up the space and move up field, okay? It's not so much as he's just moving laterally. He's just following this path to eliminate any run-throughs by like backers that think they're gonna crash down. You wanna get your guard to clear the center quickly, okay, and then eat up space um, upfield, okay? So they step laterally and forward at the same time. They want it, you wanna gobble up all that space. Now on the backside with gate, Obviously, your tight end is having to move a little bit more, but I tell him the same thing. He pulls laterally, steps to basically like open up his hips so he's facing 90 degrees to the, you know, to this way, and then he just trolleys right in as he starts to bleed up here, okay? And he he's going to be working off probably the double team that's happening right here on this side, okay? So he's going to basically run right off that to try to, you know, maybe make a make a hit on the corner, coming down, generating that tunnel, okay? 
So that that is essentially um, how I teach my poles for the power scheme. Again, you focus on eating up space upfield. Okay, so now let's go over counter. All right, let's get right into counter. Okay, so, so for counters, counter pulling is different, okay? As you can see, I put down here, I basically put my... This is this would be the 12 o'clock, you know, how kids are orientated. So when I teach kids to pull, I teach them which clock position that their first step should be. So I'll say things in practice like step to your six, step to your seven, step to your nine, step to your three. So their first step, they know which direction their toes should be facing on the clock. Okay, so for my counter pulls, it's a flat targeted pull to a defensive end or a defensive tackle. If you're running like a counter trap, the backside guard needs to understand that if he's running a trap play, he's going to impact the trap, the trapee. He's going to impact that that block at a sooner distance than he would be kicking out a defensive end. Okay, so that's why my guards are just trained on counter is different than counter trap. Okay, they still understand they're making a kickout block. But what is it? What it is is it's a flat targeted pull. And what do I mean by targeted pull? Basically, I'm going to teach my, my guards, my backside guard, assuming he's coming to kick out this defensive end right here. A targeted pull means he is going to, his first step, he's going to step to nine o'clock. Okay, so he's gonna, his, fir his first step is coming this way. Okay, nice and flat. And he gets eyes on, because right when the ball is snapped, the end is here, okay? So as he takes his first step to nine o'clock, he needs to come out right here, flat to the line. He's still eating up space, scraping paint. And what he's doing is he's getting eyes on. He's seeing where this defensive end is moving. If the defensive end moves way, way down here, like assume my three back is off to the races. If he's way down here, he just targets him and he just goes to where he's at, okay? If he stays up here, he stay nice and flat to the line and then turn up, okay? He's going to work off these double teams because, again, we're running a counter. So now this is the play side. Okay, so you have some double teams up here or whatever you have going on. He's going to scrape that up and just log right, into, the, right into, the, into this defensive end if he wants to stand there. Okay, so that's my basic countering scheme. Again, eyes on and neutralize the defensive end. If it's a trapped t a defensive tackle and he's up here, as soon as he gets in here, same thing. You step to nine, boom, there's the trap block. Okay, so counter and counter trap are the same in my system. All right, so let's, let's go over the last thing, which is Trojan sweep pulling. That'll be the last thing we'll do. All right, man, so let's get into Trojan. Okay, so Trojan, when I teach my kids, um, again, the blocking scheme is dictated by the call. So this would essentially be gun 27 Trojan sweep, okay, and sweep. Sweep is the blocking is the blocking scheme we're going to use, which is a specialty blocking scheme. It is not good God, okay? It's basically using a targeted reach block, which is basically here, and I usually use it for defenses that have been compressing and bringing their tight ends, their defensive ends, I'm sorry, really close. So we just hook them, okay? I'm cutting here, I'm chopping, I'm taking out anybody who is not pulling is, is crab blocking to just try to eliminate any penetration. Now with my pullers, everyone else is pulling, okay? Oh, sorry, I missed a, my wing back over here. <clears throat> so everyone else is pulling. When, when I teach kids how to pull and I Trojan pull, okay, they know they are stepping to seven, okay? So every kid is stepping to seven in the direction that they are going, okay? This guy is gonna kinda hang by opening up his hips from 45 degree angles facing this way. He's going to kinda open his hips this way and then start coming, okay? Now, with these kids that have a step to seven, what they do is they basically gain depth into the backfield as they wheel their eyes around to the inside, like what's going on in this area, okay? As they all come around the edge. Everybody's coming, okay? But they stay nice and deep about three yards into the backfield. That's why their first step is stepping to seven, okay? The, 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 the quarterback's gonna come this way and hand it off with the two back right about here, okay? Full back is flowing out, following everybody. Your gate puller has to basically, what I like my gate puller to happen is I like to have my gate puller right here, 
along with the fullback and the fullback kind of comes around the inside and the and the gate puller comes around the outside right and they just kind of form this little mini wall and the two back just stays right behind that and then just chooses his gap and then just attacks okay three back uh what i do with him is he basically uh he checks this reach block so he starts to peel upfield, okay? And he makes sure that the defense, that the tight end, he makes sure that he has a hold of this guy. And if he doesn't, he just crashes down on him, okay? And they just pin, they just pin this guy in, in all this scruff, allowing for all these pullers to kind of make it through, okay? If this doesn't happen and the tight end just buries the defensive end inside, okay, and he's in all this muck right up here, then what the, what the, uh, what the three back does, he just checks to a corner. He comes out here and he just like blocks off this corner, okay? Now, but again, the blocking assignments for anyone that's pulling, it's step to seven and get on your wheels, okay? And everybody comes around and then starts getting their eyes inside to basically wheel, to basically wall off flowing backers, okay? The safety flowing out here. Whoever's coming out here has to be able, your line has to wall them off, okay? Use the sideline as your friend. Take it wide. You generally do not have to cut this play up early. It's designed to you just run behind your blockers. All right, so that's my uh, that's my spiel on pulling. I hope you guys learned something today about you know the different types of pulling. Whether you do GT guard and tackle, whether you go pull guard only, or whether you're like me and gate pull, man. There's the the pulls are not all the same. So get your kids out there, get them prepared, man. Wing on.